Do you have a signature dance move? Boo boo, boo boo wine, boo. Oh my God. Well, I see that, but like, I don't even think I could do that in my dreams. You have to stop it, girl. You can do it. I have the equipment, it's, it's but I don't push. have the manual. Let's be honest. Twerking calls for a specific uniform. Spandex doesn't leave much to the imagination. But what can clothing that's meant to expose reveal? Jamaica, vacation paradise. 4.3 million people come here to get away. Rich with culture and music, it's become a worldwide source of inspiration. But it's in the poorer neighborhoods of West Kingston that creative expressions like rock steady and reggae found their voice. This is Riverton, a neighborhood that's technically the site of a city dump. It's also where Dolly Body, an aspiring dancer, grew up. So this is where everything first started. Notorious for gang violence, 90% of Riverton citizens are unemployed. But Dolly has a marketable skill. More like a motivator and an inspiration to be getting out there. Life is out there, so. Oh, we have somebody to look up to. Jolly, how does that make you feel when you hear everybody say you're a role model? It feels very amazing. Feel good. Dolly is part of what's becoming the country's most influential export, dance hall. The source of this global phenomenon is late night on Kingston streets. It's fashion, dance, and a party all in one. It's been around since the 70s, but the modern scene surrounding it is jaw-dropping. You've probably seen the videos online, and if you haven't, check this out. Part professional wrestling, part sexual pantomime with an equally provocative style. With this increased visibility, Dancehall has become a lightning rod for conversations about empowerment and exploitation. So what does it mean to put on a pair of booty shorts and whine? To her family, she's Genoia. To the world, she's danger. Dancehall queen, that's a big title. That is your whole lifestyle itself. Every move I make, everywhere I go, I want persons to look at me and say, wow, this girl, something about her, she must be a dancer. I am an international dancehall queen. People know me for doing a lot of dangerous stunts. Danger won the international dancehall competition in 2014. It's not just bragging rights. Winning it means you've made it. And I guess I have too, because tonight, the queen is taking me out to party. I have a big <laughs> confession. I cannot dance well, at all. The vibe is so contagious. What does it look like? When does it get good? On Sundays, you have early events. You want to go there by about 10 o'clock. That's the latest. early? Yes. And that's it's early? Yes, that's 10 early. 10, 10 p.m., that's early. OK, so is this what you're wearing tonight? No, oh, I'm not sorry. wearing this. I was going to say, it's, like, it's pretty stunning. <laughs> nah, no? it is stunning for now, but not for tonight. As a dance hall queen, Danger gets paid to travel around the world, teaching classes and appearing in music videos. Well, my day to day is very unpredictable. When I'm in Kingston, I go out four to seven times a week because party here is nonstop. I went to my first dance hall party at the age of 14. We were under our mom's supervision. She knows that we can get a source of income from dancing. I have the perfect job because I'm doing what I love and I'm making money from it. With her personal appearances, Danger can make up to 800 US dollars a week, three times what the average Jamaican makes. For Danger, party promo is just another day at the office. For me, it's a little different. When I go out in New York, Back home, I'm usually wearing the same exact outfit that I wear during the daytime. Put on some lipstick and maybe put my hair up. I <laughs> think that's it. Wish me luck. 
we're heading to Uptown Monday. Uptown now it's all for the men. They play a lot for the men, but there is this great energy from the music. Dance hall has traditionally been a male space, with most of the DJs and even musical artists being men. But one place they do want women is on the dance floor. And that means we get in for free. After the queen. <laughs> there are no numbers to call, no coat checks. Follow the reverberating bass to the strip mall plaza or abandoned parking lot drenched in lasers. Parties here go on every single night of the week. There's Mojito Mondays, Sexy Tuesdays, and the list goes on. I just ordered two Magnum tonic wines, basically Viagra on ice. It's the unofficial drink of dance hall. There is one main objective for us in dance hall. We like to show our bodies and show off. We're all about the wild, creative, expressive side. The way we dress, I would say, as pleasing to people's eyesight. So for my next party, I should just wear a different outfit. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and you will see yourself shaking. <laughs> Skin tight and revealing, the clothes are provocative. But as the night goes on and the cameras come out, I can't help but wonder, what are they provoking? People are pushing the limits, taking every opportunity to grab the spotlight. And danger is no exception. As I look on at the scene of late night delirium, I have to admit, part of me is horrified. Are people having fun or are there lines being crossed? I saw a woman get crushed under a person and get her hand, like head rammed into a rail, but then she came out of it smiling and so I'm a little bit confused. I wish that it could be as simple as changing my outfit, but I sense I'm gonna need more than a tube top to navigate what feels like mixed messages. What I do know for now is, as an outsider, the power dynamic on the dance floor is anything but clear. Women in Jamaica face staggering realities. One in three will experience domestic violence, and the country has one of the highest rates of rape per capita. But how do these statistics connect with the dynamics on the dance floor? We could talk almost about a culture of rape in Jamaica. We could almost talk about a culture of rape, but we certainly can talk about a culture of entitlement that men feel in relation to women's bodies. Dr. Sonia Stanley Naya has written extensively on the complex history of dance hall and its connection to Jamaica's larger cultural landscape. In Jamaica, we prescribe behaviors for women, prescribe propriety for women. We talk about the virtuous woman. And of course, in terms of gender norms, women couldn't do what men did. Women couldn't act in the way that men acted, and they certainly could not afford to have their reputation solid. But in dance hall, being a space where you can recreate yourself allows true empowerment. The fashion worn by women tells us stories. In the same way that the dance moves tell us stories. A lot of the dance moves seem pretty graphic and pretty extreme and sometimes, you know, pretty demeaning towards women. Someone from outside is always going to see dance hall in, in terms of a culture shock. It's a space with historical baggage that is filled with people who have been oppressed. Children played a prominent part in Jamaica's tribute to the Queen and the Duke. For centuries, Jamaica was a pawn to colonial powers. Sugar cane has been grown and harvested here for nearly 300 years. It suffered through slavery, riots, and various forms of social unrest until its independence from the British in 1962. Reggae became the sound of liberation but its Rasta roots were conservative, especially when it came to women and sex. People became disillusioned and began looking for a different kind of escape. Dancehall's beats hit harder, lyrics became X-rated, and the clothing got sexier. Showing off the clothes became a performance versus women began modeling, then dancing. It is a really phenomenal thing when a woman 
can adorn herself in a particular way using dance moves to become a liberated being. Dancing is everything. Dancing gives you life. If you want to free your mind, you have something where you you. Once you touch in the dance hall circle, everything just, the burden just come off of you. It's 4 p.m. and Dolly Body is waking up. Oh, I come by the name of Dolly Body. After I give birth to my son, I don't look like I just have a child. So I was in the club, take a picture, give it a caption, Dolly Body, but just run with it. And from run with it, it's gone. Growing up as one of seven children, life wasn't always easy for Dolly and her family. Dancing is her way out. I'm a dancehall dancer who wants to be a dancehall queen. Take more practicing, a lot more exposure. If you don't sell yourself, you're not going nowhere. Fashion have to be a part of your game. You have to put yourself together each night. Your fashion have to be on top. Rhinestones in mesh might not seem like everyday wear. Naya, Dolly's stylist and photographer, would disagree. Sexy and dancehall queen is like peanut butter and jelly. She's promised to get me in touch with my inner queen. This is a no underwear outfit. Nipples to the wind, basically. Nipples to the wind? Nipples to the wind. <laughs> the clothing is made to emphasize your body. Oh my god. OK, you can dance in basically anything then. Exactly. <laughs> what is the most Dolly outfit? You see this outfit? You see Dolly body? It's kind of Selena. Impa skimpy. She'd also wear this. Nobody wear it. I, would I wear it? Yeah. Live a little. Yeah. You're in Jamaica. I, this piece was inspired by an overseas designer. They can make it, but we can rock it. Just a little more <laughs> yeah. in touch with our sexy yes. side, and we're not afraid to flaunt it. Would you say that's the case for all Jamaican women? Um, not necessarily, but nowadays it's becoming more of a, of a trend. Everyone wants to feel their best about themselves, and uh -huh. clothing can do that. You just can't be a queen without looking like a queen. Like a queen. For some reason, I feel more naked in something like this than in a swimsuit. Come and wow us, yes. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> you feel sexy, don't you? I do. You feel sexy, right? I really do. I mean, this is definitely outside my comfort zone. <laughs> but like, I mean, what you look good? Check a pose, Connie, check a pose. Wow. Nice. Yeah, I love the pose. <laughs> A defining part about my style is clothes that don't show off my body. And I always like to think it's something I chose. Your butt looks great, Connie. <laughs> Thank you. But part of that might be that I'm actually not that comfortable with my body. And shopping with Dolly just now made that very clear to me. I feel like this is kind of like a figure skater look too. Like Connie on ice. In the US, people tiptoe around the idea of going out clothes. It's understood that the look should be sexy and attractive, but it can't be too sexy or too attractive. There's an invisible line that women are constantly negotiating. At dance hall parties, that line just doesn't exist. Sexuality is a given. The racy fashion becomes a source of confidence, not a hurdle. And that's all. Uh, so you often looking at yourself and no say, are you, are you come first? I have to have that confidence because if I don't, nobody will. I always feel comfortable dressing. Oh, I dress in that style. Because my dress is so according to how I feel. For Dolly, the tiny tops and shorts are a way to show off her personality and elicit confidence. But in a patriarchal society, dressing sexy can also be lucrative. In Danny Boo's life, sex sells. Of course, I love dancing, twerking and dancing, and I am very flexible. That's my thing. Danny Boo is part of a new generation of dancers. She's using social media to get the attention you would normally get from a competition. With 400,000 followers on Instagram, it's working. What makes a video go viral? Skins. No lie. No jokes. I get more views when I post video in a booty shorts. But there's another secret to her success. My manager is also my videographer. Where capturing content is concerned, it's more professional. He's also her boyfriend. He and Danny Boo met on the dance floor. All of this trust came before everything. He is my partner. 
not just my manager we're dating. When someone mentions dancer, they should think about Danibu. She has a special gift. And she's all natural. And she has great assets. <laughs> 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 right? So um, depending on the shots, I'm a guy. So I know what guys are looking for. I know sexy shots. It's interesting for me to sit here and hear them speak so frankly about using sex to increase her exposure. But Danny Boo insists that she has found success in taking control of her own image. When she's busy, she can make up to 900 US dollars a week. This is all of Kingston. Yes, beautiful. And as I overlook the city from one of its most exclusive neighborhoods, I can't disagree. If you had one piece of advice for a young woman who wants to make a name for herself within dance hall, what would that be? You have to stand for something or you're going to fall for everything. You got to be serious. If you're not serious, you have to make them take it serious. So you know you're not just in dance because you like party. You're in dance hall for something. My dream about my career is I move from the ghetto, live somewhere where I know I can take my family, having a business, not just dance. I have to get up and work for that opportunity. I'm trying to raise him different from how I grew up. I want a better life for him so he can experience the things that I never get to experience when I was younger. There is hope in being a dancer. You have to know your potential, know your worth, know how to go about getting what you want. You have to put yourself out there. Ta-da! <laughs> Sorry, Spanx. Spanx attack. Action. It's a little subtle. I mean, it's a skin-tight bodysuit and I'm calling it subtle, but now that I've seen Dance Hall, my world has changed. It's like if Lance Armstrong went a little bit goth. Dance Hall is a mirror of the Jamaican society. It reflects absolutely who we are as a people. Some of that is negative and some of that is positive. Dance Hall can be seen as a space of exaggeration. It's going to show you to, to yourself. Dali! Hi, Prince! Oh, you're fantastic! I tried tonight! I, I tried it up! Dance Hall women have made really important strides in terms of determining the ways in which we have to give up the boundaries, we have to think outside of the box. Dance Hall is a space to play with the rules or make up your own with a support system behind you. When I'm dancing, it's a great feeling. I love the feeling. That's my city and I'm the superwoman in the city right there in the dance hall. I'm gonna save the day. <laughs> In dance hall, women are fearless. Women are superhuman, inventive, hilarious, and sexy. Like, when I'm in the party, it feels amazing. It kick off, and the love and the support is real. By learning to have complete control over their bodies and what it can do, by learning how to negotiate with men on their own terms and monetize their passions, women are more empowered to confront men who believe that they don't deserve respect. We are queens, we are bold. We're not afraid to go out there to do what we want, to demand what we want and to live how we want and represent women all over the world and to let them know that it's okay to be yourself and don't be afraid, don't hold back. Ladies, turn it up.